We have made it to the last lesson of Module 8. That's going to be Lesson 6, where we're going to learn how to graph linear equations. And I suspect this is going to be using the slope-intercept form. And we've kind of talked about how to do this already. I'm not expecting any shocking revelations to come out of this one. The suggested pacing guide claims that it's going to take 90 minutes or two days to knock out this lesson. So let's get started on it. Campers at Space Camp learn about space exploration and may even participate in simulated space missions. That could be pretty cool. Space Camp also provides participants with hands-on STEM, that science, technology, something in math. I don't know what the E stands for. Oh, there it is, engineering and math. It even says it right there. How about that? Suppose a week-long space camp costs eight hundred dollars my kids didn't go to space camp nope not at eight hundred dollars you paid the initial four hundred dollar deposit and then paid the rest in monthly payments of one hundred dollars the situation can be represented by the equation y is equal to 100 times x where x is the number of months plus that four hundred dollar one-time initial fee how can you use the slope-intercept form of the equation to graph that as a line? Well, that's all going to be part of what we learn about in today's lesson. And to learn it, we're going to start off with a video from our sponsors. You can graph an equation in the form y equals mx plus b by using the slope and the y-intercept. Use the slope-intercept form of the equation to identify the slope and y-intercept. The slope is 2 thirds and the y-intercept is 1. Graph the point containing the y-intercept on the y-axis. In this case, graph the point 0, 1. Then use the slope to move from the y-intercept to a second point on the line. The slope 2 thirds indicates a rise of 2 and a run of 3. So from the y-intercept, go up two units and write three units. Another point on the line is three, three. Finally, draw a line through the two points. Pretty simple, right? No shocking revelations, just like I said there wasn't going to be. Now in example one, they give us the equation y is equal to negative two-thirds x plus four, where your slope is going to be negative two-thirds, your y-intercept is going to be four. So how are they going to have us do this? Well, let's see. First thing we need to acknowledge is that the slope is negative two-thirds, y-intercept is four. That part checked. From there, it says in order to graph the equation, we're going to first graph the y-intercept at point zero four, and then write the slope as negative two over three and use it to locate the second point of the line line and then form from the y-intercept move down two units and write three units add another point at point three two and then draw a line connecting them so let's take and zoom out a little bit and start working on that first thing we know is that the y-intercept took place at four because it says right there plus four our slope is going to be a negative two-thirds so we're going to start at our y-intercept here and we're going to go down two and run three, and that put us at point three two. Negative two thirds, down two, right three. And finally, all we have left to do is create a graph of that, or put a line on there, and that is going to end up being the graph of the equation that we've been given. Check our answer. Answer is correct. Easy math. Now it's going to be your turn. Pause the video and work extra example one on your own. How did it go for you? Let's take a look at what I'm going to do here. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to recognize the fact that in front of that negative x, remember we have to go into the mx plus b format, I actually have an invisible one right here. So I could rewrite that as y is equal to, because I have to have a rise and a run, I can change that to be a negative 1 over 1, with a rise of negative 1 and a run of 1. And of course from there, that multiplies times x, and what's my y-intercept going to be? Well, we have to put it in that plus b format, so I can rearrange that to be plus a negative 2. So now I'm going to have my slope 
is going to be negative 1 over 1. My y-intercept is going to be negative 2. And with that information, I'm ready to graph it. Jump back over here, get ourselves a dot. Actually, they're not giving us an option for dots, so I guess we're just going to take and there you go. We're going to start with a negative 2 for our y-intercept, which is right there. And our slope is going to go down 1 and run 1, so it's going to look just like that. And check it. It checks. Easy math. In example number two, they're talking about a typical leopard gecko, which they said is three inches long at birth and grows at a rate of about one-third of an inch per week for the first few months. That gave them the equation that y was equal to one-third x, one-third is your rate of change or your slope, and then y or it's going to be B plus B, that's going to be your 3 because that's going to be your y-intercept. It's going to be the starting point. When that little lizard pops out of its egg, 3 inches. That's where we begin our graph. And then it goes on from there. What are the rate of change in the initial value? Well, the rate of change, 1 third, initial value is going to be 3. All of that is good. Now, we need to recognize that our slope is one-third, our y-intercept is three. We keep talking about that. All of that's good. Moving forward from there, we're going to graph this one. Only this time I want to point out, you see how your arrow only has one, your line only has one arrow on it? That's because the baby can't be smaller than three inches. After that, or before that, it's still in the egg. It's not actually out there running around on the floor and growing in ways that we're measuring. So we're going to start by putting a dot on 3. So that's going to be the starting point where y is equal to 3. And then it grows one third of an inch per week. So it's going to take, and we're going to get another dot. Starting from the 3, we're going to rise 1 and run 3. And it's going to look just like that. Now we're going to take and connect those with a line. So we're going to put a dot here. We're going to put a other dot right there. That's going to be the line that we're going to use to represent the growth rate of that baby gecko. Hit check, and the answer checks just fine. Now it's going to be your turn. Go ahead and pause the video and work this problem involving a kite. A kite is flying at 60 feet in the air and is falling at a rate of 1 foot per second. The equation y is equal to negative x plus 60 represents the altitude y of the kite after x seconds. Graph the equation. All right, so let's take a look at that one. We're going to start off with the um, fact that our y-intercept, that's going to be our b value, is going to be 60. That's where we're going to start. We also know that our m, that's going to be this right here, is going to be a negative 1 whole x also known as a negative 1 over 1. With that information, we are ready to take and do our graph. So we're going to jump back over to the textbook page. We're going to scroll down, and we're going to start off with a dot that is going to start at 60, right here. And then it's going to go down 1, run 1, down 1, run 1. And... That should mean that we're going to drop 10 seconds right here for a run of 10 seconds. So down 1, run 1, it's the same thing as saying down 10, run 10. Check our answer, and the answer checks. That's going to be the graph of your line. Of course, I don't know about that arrow on the end because you're going to reach a point where it hits the ground and it's not going to become a big smoking hole in the ground. It can't, the kite's just not going to drill a hole. But what if we were trying to graph a horizontal line like this one they're showing us right here? The graph shows a horizontal line and all the points have the same y coordinate. So this one's the same and that one's the same and that one's the same. So it doesn't matter what value you put in for x, y is going to equal to 3. So it says select the markers to see the ordered pairs. So, so we're going to take, and I don't know how we're going to do that. Oh, yeah, cool. Negative 3, 3, 0, 3, 2, 3, and 4, 3. doesn't matter what x value you have. Your y value is always going to be 3 on these. 
Therefore, you can use the slope intercept form to derive an equation for that line. Now remember this one right here, this point where x was 0, y was 3. That's what we're going to end up using. They took the where you had m, they put 0 in for x, and 0 times x is equal to what? It's equal to x. And then what's that going to leave over? It's going to leave b, your y-intercept. So your solution for that is going to be y is equal to b, which means in this equation, y is going to end up equaling 3. And that leads us to example 3, where they give us y is equal to negative 1. When the line is written in the form, y is equal to b, what kind of line is it? It's going to be a horizontal line, just like that. doesn't matter what the x value is going to end up being, y will always end up equaling negative 1 for that one. So, this equation, that the y equals negative 1, indicates no matter what the x values are, the y values are always negative 1. Therefore, all the points on the line are going to be a point x comma negative 1. Some of the points they have listed are negative 2, negative 1, 0, negative 1, and 1, negative 1. Graph these points and then draw a line through them. So we have a negative 2, negative 1, which is oh, the wrong spot, right there, negative 2, negative 1. I've got a 0, negative 1. Let's go ahead and change that color if we can. And not too late now. We'll do a new color for the next one. And we're going to have a 1, negative 1, which is right there. And when we put our graph through that, it's going to end up looking something like that. Check it. And you can see right here that we got a horizontal line on our graph. Now you take a moment and graph y is equal to 2. Super simple on this problem. We're going to throw down our line. It's going to be a horizontal line where our y value is going to be 2. Doesn't matter what your x value is, y is always going to be 2. And check, and it checks. It really is that simple to do this problem. And this brings us to the total freaks of nature when we're dealing with these things the undefined line, the vertical line. You can see it says that the graph of a vertical line is shown, and we can select the markers and see the ordered pairs, and it doesn't matter what the y value is, your x value on this one is always going to be negative 2. The slope of the vertical line is, there's the key word, undefined. So you cannot use the slope-intercept form to derive the equation for this line. All points on a vertical line have the same x coordinates. You can see they're all negative 2 right here. And the graph shown, no matter what the value of y was, x was always going to be negative 2. The equation for the graph of the line is going to be x equals negative 2. So that's the way we would write it, just if it was a vertical or horizontal line that was y equaled whatever point of the y axis it went through. A horizontal line is going to be whatever point of the x-axis it goes through, which in this case is negative 2. The equation of the line is x equals negative 2. Therefore, the equation of any vertical line can be written as x is equal to a, where a is the value of the x-coordinate. Pretty simple stuff here. So the textbook wants us to graph the equation x is equal to 4. Super simple. Doesn't matter what the value of y is, x is always going to equal to 4. Now to prove it, they've given us three points that they want us to graph right here. So let's go ahead and do those. We're going to take, and let's use a brighter color. So I've got one that's going to be where x is 4, y is negative 2, right there. The next one says where x is 4, y is 0. And the last one says where x is 4, y is going to equal to 1. And when we put a line through those, guess what you're going to have? You're going to have yourself a vertical line that goes through the x-axis where x is equal to 4. That's it. That's all there is to working these problems. And now it's your turn. Graph this one. It should take you about 2 seconds. Nope, oh, that was about 2 seconds. Are you done yet? Let's take a look at it. y is equal to negative 5. All I have to do is come up with a vertical line that's going to go through, there's negative 5, and there's negative 5, so I've got a vertical line that goes through negative 5. Problem solved. That's it for this lesson. 
Be sure to give me good, high-quality supporting work on your homework tonight so that I can give you good, high-quality credit for doing it. I'll see you in class tomorrow.